Welcome back guys. Today we are going to talk a little bit about automatic transfer switches and load switches. And in front of you guys we have three different types. When it comes to automatic transfer switches or load switches there are a couple of different types out there that you can be using. And I have three of them in front of you here. There are of course a lot more of them. If we start from the right side we have this one here. This is just a manual 1, 0 and 2 switch. Unfortunately it's on Chinese or something. But basically it switches between load 1, shut off, load 2. And this is a 4 phase switch. So you could switch a 3 phase system including the neutral. And this is a very very good system for a 3 phase system that you want to switch between the loads. This particular one I think is rated at 25 amps. I wouldn't go above 16 though. And this is very very simple because it only switches either those that side is connected or that side is connected. So basically you have your grid incoming there, you have your solar incoming there, you hook all those up, that one up, that one, that one and that one and that goes out to your house and then you can switch between solar on one side, shut off grid. So that's the first type. It's simple, it's cheap and it works very very well. The second one is the Dean mounted or the norm mounted version. This is the same as the first one. You have the zero in the middle, two in top, one in the bottom. You have your three faces incoming on the top and you have the three faces outgoing on the bottom. This is just a three pole switch instead of this one that had four poles. So depending a little bit on your load, this one can be used instead. And the beauty about this one is that it fits into your normal DIN or norm central for your fuses or breakers. So that's really really good. But the most important or the most interesting part is the ones that I have in front of you here. What we have here is contactors. Contactors are mechanical relays that are driven either by pushing them manually or by adding electrical power. This specific one here is based on 230 volt AC. So if you apply power here this contactor will engage and the current will be able to flow in one of the directions between those, those and those. And this is a three pole mechanical or electrical contactor. It also has on the side something that can be used for electrical interlocking and that is you have the not connected and the connected in the bottom here what that does it gives you the opportunity to actually sense in what direction this currently is at and this is the one that we will base on to in today's video but before we go into the more details you might have seen this one as on eBay as well if you haven't check my video up there and see what I think about it. The version I got was total junk and did not even work for my setup at all. If we rig up our voltmeter here you will see that we have contact there but if we press it down the contact ends. If we take the bottom one we have no contact but we, if we engage the contactor we have the contact. So that's a very very good way to measure or knowing what's going on. In today's example, we will take this document or paper that I got from them here and we'll hook this system up, roughly. We are not going to include the external controller part, but we are going to hook up the internal part here. First of all, we need to mount the contactors together. I have this DIN here that I will be mounting them on, but before we do that we also need to check another thing. The contactors have something that is called a mechanical interlocking. And that means if one is connected, the other, no other one cannot be connected due to this blocking device here. So let's hook them up. It should go in like that. And we take another one and do the same thing. Now we make sure that they align in the dents, like that. You keep them together, you take this plastic piece, 
and that one should fit in between and hold them together. So now they are one. But before we continue, we're going to add up this one here for extra safety. So let's press that one in. If we could, like that. And we now have the contactor set paired together. So what we first need to do is hook this up and see if we can get them to engage. And in normal cases, they are both shut off. So that means this one will always draw a little bit of power to be engaged. So if we check here, you can see here, we have no contact in between until we press them. Secondly, if one of them are pressed down, the other one is locked. I cannot press this one down. Same goes if this goes first, this one is locked and cannot go down. And this is for preventing any stupid failures. So let's start. We will begin with one of them and hook them up. So I have prepared this deadly white cord and we will hook it up to the contactor. So now we have the first set hooked up and I have those here. They will simulate the incoming from grid and from solar. They are both turned off so let's hook this up and we turn this on. And as you can see this contactor now shuts on. So this is the first step. So let's hook this up based on the other contactor because we don't want this one to be able to engage unless this one is shut off. Remove the contact again. So let's do a little bit of a change. We knew that the side here consists of not contact and contact and they will substitute for if this is going on or off and since we are controlling this contactor here based on the output of this we go to this side and add it here we need a loop round we take this white cord here and add to the other side And let's hook up the cable again. We will have the same functionality as long as we have it hooked up like this. As you can see. What's different now is if, if I hold this one down, like if this one were engaged, and turn on the power, nothing happens on that side. Until I release it. So basically, this one is controlling the other relay or under contactor. So let go, let's go one step further and add up the second one as well. We do the same here. So now we have it all hooked up. Turn both off. Add both sources to the incoming. So what will happen now? If we turn one on at a time, it turns on. The second one, that one turn on. So what will happen if we have both incoming power? We start with the grid, we add the solar. Nothing happens. And this is the beauty of the system. Because now we only have this one here turned on, so that means this one goes through. This one is shut off. What if we shut this one off? It automatically switches over to this load. I can turn it back on again, nothing happened. So this is set up as a priority situation where the power that goes on first controls the other one. In ideal situation you need to have a control system. The same as shown here that controls which one is the first one, so it always switches back if needed. For instance, if you have an issue with your grid and the grid goes out, it will switch over to the solar, but might, it might be that you want the grid to switch on again when the grid goes back. 
then you need to have something that controls those buttons. For manually doing it in this case without shutting down the power, you can actually go in and press it and it will switch. And you can switch back. That's the simplest way to do it. Otherwise, you turn one off and it will switch. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. The ATS is something that I will be using in my setup and the reason for that is because if I shut down the solar I want the system to automatically go back to the grid. I also want opportunity to actually in the winter be able to force it to be on grid as the main system. And that's because my solar will not cope with the two months of the year when we have hard of no sun at all. In that case I want the grid to be the main power and the solar to be the secondary. And with this system here, you saw in the background that I were using or testing out, that is possible. I can switch between them to also make sure that one if is the main power over the other. I have links down below for the ATSs that I have shown you on this system here. I also have links for the manual switches as well. So guys, once again, I would like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. And I'll say, bye!